She she the won. most loved. She's Why? cool. What? I just like same. I liked her. I like it's I like her tenacity. Artist. Singer, songwriter, dancer, and Hollywood superstar, Lola Falana has been making headlines since her debut in 1961. However, despite being under media scrutiny, the acclaimed songstress has been keeping fans in the dark for a long, long time now. Now at 81, Lola Falana finally admits what we all suspected all along. Join us as we unravel the hidden secrets and struggles of one of the most acclaimed African-American singers of all time, Lola Falana her early life, and struggles. Before we take a deep dive into the secrets she harbored, it's important to understand who the acclaimed singer and actress was, and where she came from. Falana was born Lolita Elaine Falana, the third of six children born to Bennett and Cleo Falana. Her father was of Afro-Cuban descent and had served in the United States Marine Corps after fleeing from Cuba because of ongoing conflicts. He later settled down in Camden, New Jersey, where he started afresh as a welder. It was there that he met Lola's mother, Cleo, who was of African-American descent and had been working as a seamstress. On September 11, 1942, the family welcomed Lola. The singer recalled her childhood as a happy one, but admitted that the family often struggled because of financial strains. Bennett and Cleo worked hard to support the family, but on a meager salary, there were only so many luxuries they could afford for their growing family. That being said, her family was immensely supportive of her singing and recognized that Lola had tremendous potential. She started singing and dancing at the age of three, and by the age of five, she was leading the church choir. Eventually, her family relocated to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where Lola got the opportunity to sing and dance in front of larger crowds. Her family wanted her to prioritize schoolwork over a career in music and dance, but Cleo was sure to let Lola live her life the way she wanted to. By the time Lola was in junior high, she would sing and dance at nightclubs, accompanied by her mother. She had her first major gig at the age of 15 in 1958, when Dinah Washington gave her a chance to perform as her opening act. Washington had seen Lola performing and was impressed by the young girl's talent. Back in the day, Washington was well regarded as the queen of blues, and Lola looked up to her as one of her biggest inspirations. The Falana family soon realized that Lola's talent was unmatched, she was combining several different dance styles into her routine that included tap, jazz, and modern dance. This allowed Lola a chance to make enough money to help her financially struggling family, especially now since the Falanas had welcomed more children. She eventually became a part of Washington's regular opening act, and once, while performing in a chorus line in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Lola was scouted by Sammy Davis Jr. By this time, Lola had already dropped out of Germantown High School in Philadelphia, and relocated to New York City to focus full-time on performing. Lola allegedly made the decision after realizing that the only way she could become a regular working for Washington was if she made a choice between staying in school or touring. In the end, with the support of her family, she made the crucial decision to leave junior high and focus on singing and dancing full-time. Davis Jr. offered her a featured role in his upcoming Broadway musical, Golden Boy Set, for 1964. The early 60s launched Lola's career and set the pace for her decades-long career as one of the most talented singer, dancer, and eventually actress of her time. Falana was also able to focus on her singing with Davis Jr.'s help and bought recording time to record her first single, My Baby. The song was picked up and distributed by the Mercury Records in 1965. Booming career and the end of her relationship with Sammy Davis Jr. Besides being her talent manager, Davis Jr. also doubled as her mentor and eventually partner. He helped Lola eventually sign a deal with Frank Sinatra's record label, which catapulted Lola's journey as a singer into international stardom. Davis Jr. would eventually cast Lola in her first film role as Theo in A Man Called Adam, where he also served as one of the leading cast members alongside Ossie Davis and Cicely Tyson. Interestingly, her work as Theo in the film gained the attention of international producers, particularly those in Italy. And by 1966, she'd relocated to Europe to focus on becoming an Italian television mainstay. She eventually transitioned into films in 1967 and was dubbed as Black Venus by the Italian media. During her time in Italy, Lola learned and started speaking fluent Italian which helped her book more and more roles in the country. She was first cast in the lead role of Lola Gate in the spaghetti western, Lola Colt, Face to Face with the Devil, followed by two more film roles in 1968. During this time, 
Lola had also started work as a showgirl for a Saturday night television show called Sabato Sarah, where she was paired alongside the talented singer, Mina. Despite her booming career in Italy, Lola would always respond to Davis Jr. whenever he'd call her to reprise the role of Theo for his stage performances. She was often busy touring with her mentor and manager, along with making films in Italy and building an international media presence for herself. Davis Jr. was a mainstay in Lola's life in the 60s, however. In 1969, she announced that they'd ended their working relationship, although the two would continue to remain friends. At the time, amidst media speculation, Lola set the record straight and claimed that her decision to pull away from Davis Jr. was just because she didn't want to be remembered as the little dancer with Sammy Davis Jr., implying that she was focused on rebranding herself and creating an identity separate from her work with Davis Jr. 1970 was a monumental year in her career as she married Feliciano Butch Tavares Jr., one of the five brothers of the R&B and soul music group Tavares. It was also in the same year that she marked her Hollywood debut as Emma Jones in The Liberation of L.B. Jones. She starred alongside stars such as Anthony Zebra, Roscoe Lee Brown, and Lee Majors. It was director William Wyler's last film, marking an end to his 45-year run in Hollywood. Although controversial, the film, inspired by true events, was a commercial success, and Lola was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year for her role as Emma Jones. As if it couldn't get any better, 1970 was also the year Lola broke barriers when she posed for Playboy and became the first black woman to model for Fabergé Tigress perfume marketing. She continued to star in several movies during the 70s, mostly of the black exploitation niche. Then, in 1978, Lola appeared at the Val Air Ballroom sponsored by Black Pride Incorporated, struggles in her personal life. In 1975, however, Lola announced that she'd decided to part ways with Tavares. Their divorce was uncontested and amicable. They had no children. Frankly, Lola didn't have time for children as her career boomed in the 1970s. She'd now permanently relocated back to the United States after leaving her mark in the Italian film industry. Lola became a regular on The Joey Bishop Show and later The Hollywood Palace, where she was well-received by audiences for her singing and dancing abilities. She also started to try her hand at light comedy, and audiences loved her for it. All in all, Lola's career was booming because of her phenomenal stage presence. She eventually made it big when she was scouted by Bill Cosby as the first supporting player he'd ever hired for his much-anticipated variety show, The New Bill Cosby Show, which debuted on her 30th birthday in 1972. It was later revealed that Cosby knew Lola from his college years when he'd frequent nightclubs in Philly where Lola was a regular dancer. Her work on the new Bill Cosby show earned her critical acclaim and allowed her to work with Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, later on The Muppet Show, Laugh-In, and The Flip Wilson Show. Lola had established a very successful career for herself and had a dedicated fan base. It didn't take long for studios to offer her television specials. Concurrently, Lola was also working on her music career and started recording There's a Man Out There Somewhere in 1975, her first disco record. Much like her acting career, her singing career also started to blossom, and her disco record became a hit charting at number 67 on the Billboard R and B charts. This inspired Lola to return to Broadway, where she held the lead role in the musical Dr. Jazz, which earned her a nomination for a Tony Award and a win for the 1975 Theatre World Award. At the height of her career, many began to ask if she shared a deeper relationship with Sammy Davis Jr., who, at the time they met and started working together, was married to Mae Britt. Davis Jr. and Britt's marriage was highly controversial, but the two were long believed to have been the perfect pair. Together, they had one child, Tracy, and adopted two others. They divorced in 1968, and it seemed like it all traced back to Lola Falana somehow. Lola claimed that she was only in a working relationship with Davis Jr., whom she called her mentor. After leaving Tavares, Davis Jr. re-entered her life and helped her bring her act to Las Vegas, where Lola became a top drawer and was soon dubbed the Queen of Las Vegas. Lola started playing for sold-out crowds at the Sands, the Rivera, and the MGM Grand Hotels. The Aladdin took her act a step further and offered her over $100,000 a week to perform effectively making Lola the highest-paid female performer in Las Vegas. 
Her shows would run for 20 weeks during the year, and it became a mega tourist attraction. Alongside her busy schedule in Las Vegas, Lola tried to maintain her Hollywood career. She was slated to star in a remake of the 1950s Vampira show. When this project collapsed, she joined the cast of the short-lived CBS soap opera Capital as Charity Blake, a wealthy entertainment mogul, health struggles, and multiple sclerosis. Lola was dedicated to her craft, and it seemed likely that she'd be performing well into her old age. Despite her many, many successful years in the industry, her career was ultimately cut short in 1987 when the talented singer and actress revealed that she'd been struggling with a debilitating disease, multiple sclerosis. The performer was known for many things, one of which was her reluctance to talk about her personal life. Lola later recounted how she first realized she was suffering from health complications in the early 80s when she awoke one day and experienced confusing symptoms. As her condition worsened and she started experiencing paralyzing symptoms such as blindness in one eye, Lola contacted a physician who confirmed that her symptoms were in line with a multiple sclerosis diagnosis in 1987. MS is an unpredictable and often disabling disease of the central nervous system, where the immune system attacks the protective sheath that covers nerve fibers, leading to communication problems between the brain and the rest of the body. For Lola, the diagnosis changed her life completely. The disease initially led to partial paralysis, temporary blindness in one eye, and other severe physical impairments. Her symptoms made it impossible for her to continue performing at the level she was accustomed to, forcing her to step away from her career right at its peak. After her diagnosis, she underwent extensive treatment and rehabilitation. Over time, she managed to regain some control over her symptoms, although the impact of the disease remained a constant challenge, marking the end of her professional career as she knew it. She later laminated on her time since discovering that her left side was completely paralyzed and claimed that she tried to fight her diagnosis for as long as she could. Lola claimed that despite having a walker nearby, she refused to use it and would instead grab onto furniture nearby to get about her residence. The singer believed that she would weaken her remaining muscles if she started making use of AIDS so early on in her diagnosis. Eventually, however, Lola's close circle advised her to stop fighting her diagnosis and pushing herself when she physically couldn't. According to the singer and actress, she started canceling her sold-out shows and estimated that she lost close to $2 million in revenue because of it. Spirituality and Healing Lola's battle with MS also marked a significant shift in her life priorities. She turned to spirituality and became a devout Roman Catholic, finding solace and strength in her faith. This spiritual transformation led her to a new mission, to inspire and support others facing similar health struggles. In interviews, Lola has spoken candidly about her experiences, emphasizing the importance of hope, faith, and perseverance. She highlighted the necessity of a strong support system, including family, friends, and medical professionals in managing chronic illness. Her story has served as an inspiration to many, demonstrating that even in the face of severe adversity, one can find purpose and meaning. Although her career was curtailed by MS, Falana's legacy as an entertainer and advocate endures. She remains a symbol of grace and strength, not only for her contributions to the entertainment industry, but also for her courage in confronting a debilitating illness. Through her advocacy work, she has helped bring greater awareness to multiple sclerosis, encouraging more research and support for those affected by the disease. During an interview with Ebony Magazine in 1988, Lola claimed that one morning she realized that the left side of her face was drooping and she had absolutely no lower limb strength. It was in that moment, according to Lola, that she realized beauty and physical appearance were fleeting and that the only real thing she had to show for herself was her faith. Lola had been raised in a Roman Catholic household, but she'd strayed from her faith as her career grew. Her MS diagnosis, however, brought her back to it. The singer and actress also claimed that for a long time, she tried to do muscle exercises and took several physical therapy sessions that would help curb the disease. Nothing worked, and in the span of one year alone, Lola had almost four near-fatal flare-ups. Lola Falana's Shocking Secret After being diagnosed with MS in the late 80s and choosing to take a step back from the life of glitz and glamour, Lola had a moment of self-reflection. It was during this time that she started questioning her ascent to fame the people who helped her get there, and also the people she hurt in her journey toward the very top. For one, 
Now that she couldn't make use of the left side of her body, Lola realized that her singing and acting career was over. The singer and actress was beloved and might have had a loyal fan base, but they were quick to move on to the next big thing once Lola started canceling her performances. At this moment, Lola realized that everything in life was fleeting. She reminisced on how the industry celebrated her for her appearance, but was quick to cast her away once she couldn't command the stage with her external beauty anymore. However, in Lola's eyes, this wasn't the end all to her life as many media outlets suspected. If anything, this was the beginning of an even bigger journey in her life where she could devote herself to faith. A key aspect of moving on and becoming a better person than who she once was, however, came with a lot of acknowledgement of who she heard along the way. Lola later recounted how her mother, despite all her support, would have wished that her daughter had stayed in school and pursued a career elsewhere, besides frequenting nightclubs and wanting to become a singer and a dancer. Lola later claimed that she regretted not listening to her mother and taking her advice. Her time away from the camera also allowed her to take a look back at some of her leading roles, and that was when she realized that Hollywood only gave her portrayals of beautiful but otherwise airheaded women to play. She later realized that her career on screen was marred by black exploitation. Her only real outlet was Broadway, for which she was celebrated for her skill and prowess. She claimed that she had Sammy Davis Jr. to thank for everything that he did for her when she was barely 16 and starting out. At the same time, however, she revealed her biggest secret. Lola admitted that she was the cause of his divorce. Sammy and Mae Britt were married amidst controversy in 1960. Sammy was African American and Mae was of Swedish descent. Allegedly, Frank Sinatra was asked to intervene by President Kennedy, urging Sammy to get married after the presidential election when interracial marriages would be legalized. Because of Sammy's refusal, he was shunned by the Kennedys for some time and wasn't invited to perform at the inauguration as was originally planned. Despite all the controversy, Sammy and May enjoyed an otherwise picture-perfect marriage and their decision to split ways in 1968 sent shockwaves in the community. It was later revealed that Lola Falana was the cause of the dissolution of Davis Jr.'s marriage. Allegedly, the two had embarked on an extramarital affair shortly after she starred as Theo in Golden Boy. This puts the start of their relationship sometime in 1963, and it only ended in 1968 when May made him choose between her and Lola. Despite choosing to stay with May and trying to make his marriage work, the two couldn't reconcile after the deceit and parted ways. A heartbroken Lola, on the other hand, decided to get married to the first man she found companionship with, too. That man was Tavares. Lola and Davis Jr. continued to be cordial with each other in the years since the end of their affair. However, Davis Jr., who'd been living a complicated personal life for years, started an addiction to heavy drugs after the end of his marriage with May and became estranged from his children. He would eventually marry for a third time, but was allegedly cheating on her just the same. As for why Lola and Davis Jr. never married themselves, it had a lot to do with the media scrutiny that would have followed Lola's booming career and the fact that she would be cast away in Davis Jr.'s shadow. She was already worried that the world viewed her as an extension of her mentor and wasn't willing to continue with that image any further. Lola, however, has since realized how she played a vital role in Davis Jr.'s addiction and the end of his marriage. However, at the time of the affair, she was allegedly underage, while Davis Jr. was a grown man with a celebrated career. Regardless, after realizing that her life and career didn't allow for a personal life on top of it, Lola decided to part ways with her one and only husband as well. Recognition and Legacy Often celebrated as the First Lady of Las Vegas, Lola Falana pioneered the way for other black women in America to chase their dreams in the music industry and Hollywood. Lola was a celebrated artist who gained international recognition through her work as Black Venus in Italy. She was a polarizing figure in Broadway, Italian cinema, Hollywood, and the music industry, eventually becoming a headliner in Las Vegas, attracting sold-out arenas. Falana's performances were not just acts, they were experiences that captivated audiences and solidified her status as a top entertainer. In addition to her performing talents, Falana broke barriers as an African-American woman in entertainment during a time when opportunities were limited by racial and gender biases. She was one of the highest paid female performers in Las Vegas, a testament to her widespread appeal and exceptional talent. 
Her success paved the way for future generations of African-American performers, contributing to the gradual diversification of the entertainment industry. Lola's influence extended beyond her performances. She was a fashion icon known for her glamorous style and elegance, often featured in magazines and media. Her striking looks and trend-setting fashion choices made her a beloved figure in the fashion world, influencing styles and setting trends. She was forced to step back from her demanding schedule. However, Lola used her platform to raise awareness about the disease and became an advocate for health and wellness. Her openness about her struggles with MS inspired many and highlighted her resilience and determination. Lola Falana's impact on media and entertainment is profound. She broke racial and gender barriers, setting new standards for excellence and paving the way for future artists. Her dynamic performances, coupled with her advocacy and personal strength, have left a lasting legacy. Even after stepping away from the spotlight, her influence continues to be felt, reminding us of her contributions to the arts and her role as a trailblazer in the entertainment industry. Retirement and Life Today Today, Lola Falana's life is one of peace, spirituality, and dedication to causes close to her heart. Following a successful career in entertainment, Lola's journey took a significant turn due to health challenges, specifically her battle with MS. This shift led her to redefine her life's purpose and find new ways to contribute to the community. After being diagnosed in 1987, the singer-slash-actress faced a debilitating period that forced her to take a step back from her career. The symptoms, including partial paralysis and temporary blindness, were life-altering. However, Lola's approach to these challenges was with resilience, and she found solace in her faith. She embraced Roman Catholicism more deeply, seeing her health struggles as a call to spiritual renewal and service. Lola soon moved away from the glitz and glamour of show business to focus on her spiritual journey. Her commitment to her faith led her to become an active member of the Catholic Church, where she has participated in various ministries and outreach programs. This spiritual dedication has provided her with a sense of purpose and fulfillment, transforming her personal trials into a source of inspiration for others. The former superstar has also devoted her life to advocacy and philanthropy, particularly around issues related to multiple sclerosis and other chronic illnesses. She has used her platform to raise awareness about MS, speaking at events, and supporting organizations dedicated to research and patient support, and has maintained a positive and active lifestyle. She has focused on wellness, incorporating healthy living practices to manage her symptoms and improve her quality of life. Lola Falana's legacy continues to be celebrated, but she has gracefully transitioned into a role that emphasizes giving back and supporting others. She often reflects on her career with gratitude, acknowledging the opportunities and experiences that shaped her. Her story is not just one of a successful entertainer, but also of a woman who has faced significant challenges with grace and determination. By embracing her faith and dedicating herself to advocacy, Falana has continued to make a meaningful impact beyond the stage. What did you think about Lola Falana's shocking secret that some fans had suspected all along? Let us know in the comments, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and we'll see you here again for another video.